history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. We begin tonight with breaking news. A man convicted of killing an 8-year-old girl in Fort Bend County has just learned his punishment. Jacoby Payton has been sentenced to 78 years behind bars. Payton, who was 19 at the time, shot and killed 8-year-old Damari Adkins. Adkins was asleep in the backseat of a car when she was shot after a wreck in 2017. It happened near the intersection of Fuquay and the Beltway. Again, 78 years is the sentence handed down by jurors just minutes ago. Now to an arrest that is hard to watch, a forceful takedown inside a store in Baytown, but officers say this video does not tell the whole story. And just in, new images that might change your mind about what you saw in that video. A chaotic scene at that store. Baytown PD says it started well before their officer arrived. The suspect accused of refusing to pay and also being verbally abusive to customers. Channel 2's Bill Barajas live in Baytown with that video starring a suspect that's no stranger to police, Bill. Was well, actually his third run in with Baytown police in just the past three days. He had just got out of jail here and walked down the street on a Tuesday to that Conoco gas station. The rest was caught on the store's surveillance camera. The video has gone viral. A short clip showing the moment a fight breaks out between 59 year old James Liberto and a Baytown police officer. The suspect uh, had a cup of coffee in his hand. When the officer made contact with him, we went to pull him out of the store. The suspect throws the coffee. Uh, in the officer's face. The 14-year veteran of the department can immediately be seen punching the man at the entrance of a Conoco gas station. Lieutenant Steve Dora says there's a brief struggle on the ground and seconds later, backup arrives. So he remotely deployed his canine. Mm -hmm. uh, so the canine came on into the uh, store and they were able to take the suspect down. The store clerk says Liberto was refusing to pay for several items and was being rude to customers. He was arrested for aggravated assault on a peace officer and has since been taken to the Harris County Jail. I don't know what his, uh, his mental makeup is. You know, I don't know what uh, caused him to act the way that he did. Uh, you know, but you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, his actions caused our officers to, uh, to react. Police say Liberto had just been arrested on Sunday and again on Monday for public intoxication. This particular suspect had just been released from our jail uh, just minutes before he went down to the store. Uh, when we tried to release him from our jail, he wouldn't even comply with that. Uh, and he winds up in the lobby of our jail, pulling the fire alarm and then running out. 
Now we're told Baytown police will hold an internal investigation. As for the officer, he's expected back on duty tomorrow. Live in Baytown, Bill Barajas, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Bill, thank you. There's been another frightening wild hog encounter. A husband and wife terrorized by the animal in Montgomery. At one point, the hog even charges at both of them. That's when the husband took action with his crossbow. Channel 2's Phil Archer live with this wild, wild hog confrontation. Phil? Yeah, that homeowner who asked not to be identified told us it was like something out of a movie. That big pig went after him, his wife, and their animals and didn't stop until he was killed. Early this morning, the homeowner heard his dogs barking and looked outside to see them fighting a 165-pound wild boar. He ran out and helped them chase the pig away, but the boar came back and went on the attack. Home security cameras recorded him chasing the man's wife back into their house. The pig then tried to attack her husband, destroying kids' toys and a fish tank on the patio, and then damaging a garage door for good measure. After it chased me and I kind of tucked in the corner, the pig ran up to the back door of the garage and rammed into the back door of the garage till he broke the door off the frame. The pig ran off to go root at a neighbor's house, but then returned. And uh, then when he realized where I was, he came straight at me. By this time, the homeowner had armed himself with a crossbow. He was still standing here on the front porch. And so when he saw me, I mean, something like out of a movie, the pig just came running straight at me. And it was, you know, f not even five o'clock in the morning yet. So it was too dark for me to really get a sight on him. So I just pretty much put the crossbow at him and pulled the trigger. He didn't have time to aim, but managed to send the bolt straight into the hog's heart. Now he's decided to keep the pig. He's having it mounted. Michael Rollert is the taxidermist. He's hunted hogs himself, but never heard a story like this one. Until you see the footage, you wouldn't kind of believe it. He chases his wife, chases him. You know, there's different things going on, but um, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. Not all wild hog encounters turn out as well. Last November, a Chambers County woman was killed when wild hogs attacked her. Reporting live in Montgomery County, I'm Phil Archer, KPRC Channel 2 News. Way too close to home. Mm. Phil, thank you. Damp, dark, dreary. Just a few words to describe our weather today. Yeah, another one is drizzly. Mm -hmm. Frank, that is a word you came up with. We Drizzleable. Really use, use it today, yes. yes. Uh, and it's definitely so. And it's been raining pretty hard in Galveston. They've had about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch of rain. But some good news there. Things are beginning to quiet down. There's a look. You see that train of rain just continuing to move through. But obviously, it's now pulling away. So that red area, especially is moving offshore. So that's good news. You'll get a break. In the meantime, fairly quiet across Harris County. The drive today, not so bad. It's just cold out. Temperatures all in the low to the upper 50s, and it's going to continue to be just about there as we go into the evening. 53, 51, 50 and 11. Skies are going to clear, which means a whole lot better tomorrow as all of this continues to pull on through. We'll talk about that coming up. It's been a mess up to our north and off to our east. Look at the line of storms right there into Alabama and Tennessee. Winter weather up to the north around the Great Lakes. Blizzard warnings have been in Minnesota. There's a severe thunderstorm watch with flash flood problems anywhere from Alabama all the way up into parts of Ohio. So they have really been under this system. We lucked out in a lot of regards. So cuddle up for Valentine's. I've got some cold air coming in, even some frost is possible. I'll show you where coming up. A nice Mardi Gras start and then the next chance of rain is also on the board. So it's straight ahead. Dominique. All right, Frank, thank you. In the meantime, any minute now, a serial rape suspect will go before a judge in a probable cause court on his sexual assault charges. Brandon Carter was taken into custody after the Houston Police Department put out an alert about a series of rapes in West Houston and the Greenspoint area. Investigators tell us they arrested Carter at an apartment complex in spring earlier today. Here is his new booking photo. Carter is accused of stalking, robbing, and sexually assaulting several women over the last seven months. An anonymous Crime Stoppers tip led to his capture. A man just doing his job was killed today in Rosenberg. The contractor was installing lines when the trench he was digging gave way and collapsed on him. Dozens of first responders worked to save him near FM 2218 near Bryan Road. Sion Rhodes is covering the story. And Sion, in your live report at 5 o'clock, the road was still closed. Has it reopened yet? They have reopened it, Keith, though you can see behind me that there are work crews that have one lane partially blocked off, but traffic is moving through here just fine. As far as the investigation to what went wrong here, sources tell me there did not appear to be a trench box in place. That's something that would usually be at a site like this to protect workers and prevent collapses. It is dangerous work. 
you're working in, in a trench, anything can happen. Uh, dirt can move very quickly, especially when, uh, when it's wet or if you're working in, in loose sand. Investigators say Wednesday afternoon, a worker became trapped. It's a utility contract crew uh, that was putting in some, uh, some lines in a ditch. Uh, there was a trench that was approximately eight foot by five foot. Uh, that the worker was working in uh, when the uh, dirt collapsed around him. More than 30 first responders were called to the scene, including the specially trained Fort Bend County Technical Rescue Team. Their primary responsibility was to shore up the trench uh, and make it safe for rescuers to go in uh, and uh, treat the patient uh, as best they could. Unfortunately, they were not able to save the man. It's a tragedy any, any way you look at it. Um, you know, our hearts and, and, and our, uh, our prayers go out to the family. Rosenberg police have not identified the man yet. They say they are still trying to identify or notify some of his family members. And again, as far as that investigation, they have asked OSHA to come in to see if all of the safety protocols were properly followed at this site. Reporting live in Rosenberg, Sion Rhodes, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Sion. Meanwhile, a short chase on Houston's south side ended with a head-on crash and a driver facing charges. Houston police tell us it all began along Dixie Drive when police tried pulling over the car. That driver hit the gas and took off. Investigators say he then led police on a five-minute chase to the intersection of Old Spanish Trail and Cullen Boulevard, where he crashed head-on into another vehicle. Thankfully, the innocent driver was only left with minor injuries. I'm a little banged up and sore, and my neck got compressed, I believe. But for the most part, I'm, you know, I got a couple burns. And I looked up, and he came over that hill, and yeah. it was a mess. I'm it's just, there was nothing to do. You couldn't do anything. It just happened so quickly. An eyewitness to the crash tells us that police broke the window and were forced to drag that driver out. A health alert tonight for a local school district. Cold Spring Oakhurst Consolidated ISD is seeing a big spike in flu cases, so it is canceling classes for Friday. The district says it has had excessive absences related to the flu. School will resume Tuesday, February 18th, after the President's Day holiday. Here's a traffic alert you'll probably like. Weekend construction on the West Loop at the Southwest Freeway is now limited to nights only. Going forward for the next few weekends, the 610 West Loop at the Southwest Freeway will only be closed overnight. That's going to start this Friday at 9 p.m. All main lanes will reopen each morning at 5 a.m. Now, the area had been shut down continually until Monday morning the past two weekends. Still ahead tonight, a new tribute to Honorary Officer Abigail Arias, the new addition to the Freeport Police Department made in her name. All right, what is that out there? It's orange. I'll explain just what it is coming up and how long it's going to last. That's straight ahead in weather. All right, thanks a lot, Frank. We're live in West Palm Beach here with the Astros on the eve of day one of spring training. And for the first time, the players are set to speak about the sign-stealing scandal after the MLB report. The players slowly making their way into the facility today. I'll talk about what's next for this team and Dusty Baker's recent comment about this tough transition he and the players will face. That's ahead in sports. Okay, Randy, and space explorer, record-breaker, trailblazer, Christina Cook talking about her three 328 days in space next on Channel 2 News at 6. Electricity for less. So if you want to ask Sir, a question, I'm asking a tough statement. question. And we'll respond. The question, what are hundreds of pieces of African art doing inside of a county maintenance shed? We can get a tour. Of the entire building? Yeah. Perfect. A private art collection in a public facility with no paperwork. The agreement that you signed, is it reflective of what is going on inside of that shed? No, not at all. Channel 2 investigates. We need to get right, answers, sir, you. about what's inside that maintenance shed, sir. Tonight at 10. She is a space exploring trailblazer. Christina Cook leading the way for women in space flight after spending 328 days on the International Space Station. The longest single space flight for a woman ever. Cook returned to Earth last week, and now she's talking about her record-breaking feat. Channel 2's Andy Sirota live at Johnson Space Center with that fascinating interview. Andy? Dominique and Keith, Christina Cook says it's been mostly an easy transition since her return to Earth, but she was joking with us this afternoon. She says since her return home, she's discovered some muscles that she hasn't used in a while. And in all seriousness, she's also thought a lot about what she would tell future space explorers. It's the same advice that she got from her mentors, astronauts Scott Kelly and Peggy Whitson. 
NASA astronaut Christina Cook says one thing a long mission teaches you is how to focus on the things you have that you'll never have again versus what you're missing. And it helps you to recognize every day how special what you have is, which then in turn makes you feel like you need to bring your best to sort of meet that every single day. Cook admits there was a point where being on board the International Space Station stopped feeling like an expedition and started to feel more like home. And it was fairly early on in the mission. About three months in is when things that were part of her daily routine felt normal. Not using a cup to have a drink of water and filling up food packets and things like that. Even floating, I jokingly say that I kind of forgot I was floating until a new crew would come and they would be so excited about floating. I would think, oh, well, guess we are floating, aren't we? After completing the longest single space flight by a woman, Cook says her biggest hope is that her record is exceeded as soon as possible. That means we're pushing the boundaries. More people are living to up to their dreams and their potential. To follow your passions, be true to yourself, do what you love, and live the life that you've imagined for yourself. Cook says her first six days back on Earth were full of as much wonder and excitement as she experienced up in space. We are live at Johnson Space Center tonight. Andy Sirota, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Yeah, amazing adventure. Glad she's back home, Andy. Thank you. Well, new at 6 o'clock, the Freeport Police Department is paying tribute to Abigail Arias, Honorary Officer 758, once again, now by naming its newest K-9 after her. Meet K-9 Abigail. The police dog was donated by Vapor Wake K-9 Technology out of Anniston, Alabama. The group, like many others across the country, followed Officer Abigail's journey as she battled cancer last year before her death and they felt moved to make the donation in her honor. Nicely done. And we are also honoring Officer 758 with Bells for Abigail. It's an ongoing series that we started just a few weeks ago. Children ringing the end of treatment bell after battling cancer. We have received dozens of videos and we hope families will continue to send them to us. You can upload your child's bell ringing video at click2houston.com forward slash Bells for Abigail. They are so oh, awesome. I love to it. See. Oh, yeah. it's great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Such hope. Yes. Um, okay, there's hope for sunshine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just a, a glimpse. I know. Well, Justin saw that sunshine picture. He was so inspired. He ran out and got me this shot. Got to get uh, another one. Good this job. is from right outside our studio doors. Look at that. Wow. I know. You've got that to look forward to, except it's going to be dark when we go out <laughs> at 6 30. Let's get this newscast over with. Hurry, hurry. Stop, <laughs> so, stop. We almost got to see it, but not completely, I'm afraid. So. There you go. Look at that. Ooh. Beautiful. This is the one I showed just before. That's pretty. I know. Great. From Ted Bergeron in the Museum District. So gorgeous there. Thanks for that. You, and Justin, I appreciate that. All right. 57, 62, and 68 for highs this afternoon. Uh, and, and really, the 62 and 68 was this morning. We had this little warm surge before that front moved in. So if you got into the 60s, that's why. 52 right now with that wind out of the north northwest. There's a look at Galveston, and it's wet still. You can see just the uh, rain glistening there on Seawall Boulevard. 58 degrees, northwest uh, wind at 12 miles an hour, humidity at 90%. No surprise there. 50s, everywhere you look, just take your pick. 51, 52, 53, 54. It's cool and chilly. Temperatures with the humidity feel even a little cooler, just that damp chill on you. That northwest wind is going to supply the dry air. That's what's finally clearing us enough to see the sun back out to the west. All of this rain continuing to move on through. So that's going to be the trend as we go on into this evening and the overnight. Look at that clear sky. That's what you'll wake up to tomorrow morning. I, hopefully you can send me some sunset pictures if you got one tonight, but certainly some sunrise pictures are going to be nice as we get into tomorrow. Thursday looks terrific. Temperatures in the 50s pretty much stay there, but with the clearing sky by 11 midnight, we'll go down to the mid 40s to wake up to. And then tomorrow under full sunshine, only up to 60. So it's going to be a cold, sunny Thursday. And then because of that, I'm looking for some frosts on the at least the roses on Valentine's morning. 34 in Cleveland, Huntsville, College Station, Brenham 34, 34 in Columbus. There's a chance to the north and west, you could get nipped with a little light freeze, certainly. So Valentine's Day starts out chilly and then 56 at noon, 64 for your flower stop as you rush to Fannin to pick up flowers that you forgot to pick up, 62 for dinner time, and 54 at 10 on Valentine's night. So there's the bigger picture. All that clear sky is for us. High pressure is moving in to supply that. The only trick will, it will, it will be really kind of cold on Friday because it's right over us and the winds will calm, will calm down under the clear sky. And then they'll start to return out of the Gulf. So we get a little more cloud cover in here.
I don't think it's going to wreck Saturday by any means. And there's a chance for a, sort of a scraping little bit of rain along the coast on Sunday. That's about it. We'll wait until really midweek next week for a better chance of rain with that next front. High temperatures go from 60 tomorrow to 76 on Monday. So we have a nice climb before that next front arrives. Power planet for tonight. If you're down on the island, keep an umbrella handy. Everybody else is in pretty good shape. 53, 51, 50, 40s overnight. Looking better for tonight's hair cast. High tomorrow, only 60. If you get above that, you're one of the lucky ones. 64 on Friday. Mardi Gras begins. Saturday's Gambrinus Parade looks good. 68 for Saturday's high. 20% chance of rain on Sunday, but that's mostly at the coast. So the Roughnecks game, no problems there. These are the better chances of rain. 20, 40, 30 for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, lingering into Thursday. Clearing again for the San Luis Salute and the Moments Parade the next Friday. Friday and Saturday, that moment's parade we're going to be carrying live here on Channel 2. That's the uh, February the 22nd from yeah. 6.30 to 8. Right, we live can... from Galveston. Yeah, it should be fun, a lot of fun. Yes. Let hey. the good times roll. Yes. <laughs> right. You know, speaking of sunshine and palm trees, uh, yes. yes, why don't we join Randy McElvoy <laughs> live in West Palm Beach, Florida tonight? Hey guys, I can tell you it was like mid 80s, perfectly sunny today. <laughs> of I know the best. Not to rub it in or anything. Uh, it should be pretty good in the next few days. Hey, we are here. Uh, spring training set to open tomorrow. The uh, players, the pitchers, and catchers have made their way here. Uh, they open practice tomorrow, but they've got some talking to do. A lot of it tomorrow. Uh, it's the day we're going to hear from the players as they weigh in on that MLB report, the cheating scandal, and losing their skipper AJ Hinch. We're going to hear from Dusty Baker straight ahead. Plus, Yates Lions are national record holders tell you what they accomplished last night and we got reaction to it coming up next